Hello and welcome back to Frame by Frame, the Game House's only LEC podcast. My name is Mallory and I'm joined here by my good friend Tim. How are you, Tim? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. How about you, Ben? Doing really good. I have a really interesting game for us to talk about today. And a game that looks like it could have gone either way, but I think it's about time to talk about SK Gaming. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, SK versus Mad. Uh, I think we'll do a deeper dive this week into the draft because I think we both have a lot of things to talk about going into that. Absolutely. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. This draft went very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, we can see here, we come in with the Renata ban right away, followed by the Yumi. Why do you think we're seeing so many supports right away? It's hard to say. Renata and Yumi really are the top two supports competitively right now. Um, they pair well with both Callista, pair well with Zeri, um, any of the hyper carries that people are willing to play. So it really opens you up um, to being able to play more of those engaged style supports um, to set your team up. Yes, Mad Lions goes for the Nada and the Callista. Just for good measure, I do think Jezu and Sirtis have been very instrumental in SK's wins up until this point. And they had really done a lot, I think, Sirtis the week before this, really making a name for himself. And, of course, Poppy is just the best jungler on the patch right now. Oh, by far. Oh, 100% by far. And I, I would say the Gwen is probably one of the best top laners at the moment. I think taking that away from Armut is completely understandable. I don't ha- take much offense to these bans quite yet. Yes, Armut's back in playoff form, so you really want to try to keep him off of something that has agency, which we'll see how it goes uh, today. But Yeah, and the Zeri. A pick I think Unforgiven would be happy to play, but I mm-hmm. think Zeri, Yumi, in... in comparison to Callista Renata, it seems like both teams really wanted to ban out the opposing bot lane's probably preferred strategy. Yes. Um, just looking at it, uh, both best bot lane's probably in the on the patch right now. And looking at Mad with their first pick, Talia is really strong this patch. She's very flexible. You can play her in jungle. You can play her in mid. Um, does a lot in gives you the flexibility with your mid or your jungle to play an AD option in either role as well. Mm -hmm. And SK hovering a lot of picks in top lane for Gen X. The NAR blind pick, totally fine. What I hate (laughs) is the Silas immediately. You really want to wait until at least the second phase of picks to pick Silas because now you know, first of all, you would really want (laughs) Mad Lions to pick NAR and then you pick Silas, which is an immediate value pick, but Silas, for, just for Talia ult, seems so, so weird to me. It, it almost feels like they know they're picking Nara and go, well, we don't want Silas to be able to steal, steal Nara ult. It's one of the best combos in the game. Even if it's more likely for this Talia to go in the mid lane, we're willing to scrap having all these really bad ults, which ends up being the case. Yeah, and Mad Lions just knows now, okay, we can now pick champions that don't have a game-changing ult. You're not going to see a Leona. You're not going to see... You're not going to see really anything. Gangplank ult is nice for Silas to have, and Trundle ult will not be really anything as long as Mad Lions doesn't pick a super tank for themselves. Mm -hmm. And Gangplank, Gangplank and Trundle showing kind of confirms that they will not be picking a super tank. Silas does not get any value out of that. Mm -hmm. and it almost feels like with their third with SK's third pick here it's almost a self counter here with the Jarvan with going in with ulting you're already putting yourself in two champs' wheelhouse you want with the Talia and with Gangplank you want grouping up fights you want to be able to hit off the big damage out of your abilities and you're just setting it up perfectly for them Yep, and we're seeing now more AD bans coming through. Draven and Ezreal, both teams picking presumably their top jungle mid laner at this point in the draft. We can't be so sure that Trundle isn't going support or Jarvan isn't going support, as uncommon as it is. And the Karthus coming through as a ban for SK. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the only person that played Karthus bot lane 
was Gadget when he subbed in for SK Gaming. And I'm not sure, maybe Unforgiven had been practicing it in scrims. Not entirely sure about that one. Yeah, and even looking at it, I just see it almost as a throwaway ban. You know that you have the AP mid laner. That's a lot of AP damage on your team, having Karthus and Talia on the on your uh, on your team. Because even with Trundle being AD, you don't look at him to take over a game and no. put up these huge damage numbers. And the Aphelios pick, I'm not sure how happy I am about that. Mostly because you were just opening yourself up for Mad Lions to just finish off their skirmish comp and just to be able to do whatever they want. Aphelios really <laughs> doesn't want to be faced up against a Jinx, which... Unforgiven is about to pick, knowing this lane matchup, Jinx will just out-team fight the Aphelios, mm -hmm. given the right circumstances. And I don't think that a Silas will be able to get on top of her. Mm -hmm. and, and you look at it, and this almost goes where that ban, that Karthus ban comes in. You're leaving up the Rakan, and the Rakan here doesn't really have a bad matchup, even with as we see here in a second, SK picking Nautilus, it's not the worst matchup in the world. Are you going to win lane? No. But picking Jinx, you're not trying to win lane. No. You can stave off ganks, you can play around bot lane still, and still have agency to do really what you want to do. Matt has so many options that they can do um, based off of this draft, and SK seems kind of pigeonholed. Absolutely. And it, the onus really is up to SK to make something happen and make this Silas pick worth it. I know Gen mm -hmm. X had a really good performance on NAR the day before this. Maybe this was a confidence pick that they're saying, we're on a roll, we're doing really well. But I think without some hero plays by Jezu, it's just really not going to work. I mean, Aphelios is good and he's a really high skill cap champion. But when faced against such an easy comp for Mad Lions to pull off, it mm -hmm. really, really have a long way to go. And looking at the drafts, too, these two teams are almost doing the opposite of what they're good at. Mad is known for their early game pressure. They have uh, having really big gold leads at uh, 14. They're averaging 2,000 gold ahead at 14 minutes and averaging 3.3 kills at 14 minutes. So they're really wanting to be proactive in the early game. And they've drafted a scaling comp. SK, on the other hand, they're pretty passive in the early game, only averaging one kill at 14 minutes. So it's really interesting to see how both teams are kind of playing based off of just differences of what they normally play like. Absolutely. I wouldn't put it past Mad Lions to say, okay, SK is an easier opponent. We need to be practicing some styles we're not as comfortable with, or we will just get blown out in playoffs. But 100%. SK really looking pretty good. And we can see here, Mad Lions grouping as five, hoping to find something, some sort of early invade. I think with the Trundle, especially if he starts Pillar and Rakan starts anything but Q, really, mm -hmm. I think they can really get something going there. And mm -hmm. SK on doing almost the exact same thing with Gilius yes. getting, the, getting the ward right by Redside Raptors. They're not going mm -hmm. to find anything. Yes, and... Really mad sets up this early game to almost a little too over aggressive, kind of a little cocky in a sense. Um, I think Elioia is looking at it like I'm a better jungler than Gilius, and I can really take over this game pretty easily. Yeah, maybe so. And I think, especially with the Nautilus, I think SK would probably win these short little level one fights, depending mm -hmm. on what. Uh, depending on what Silas took as his first ability, I think they have a really, really strong level one. Uh, but we will see as the minions come in, mm -hmm. Mad decide they're going for it. And that ward we mentioned earlier gives it away completely. So let's watch SK now, see what they do. Gilius gives it up, decides he's not going to fight. Sirtis isn't going to come help. So Mad will just take this red buff and Armit doesn't really lose anything for it. <laughs> In the way you look at it, you have really a pushing lane and bot lane for SK. So I don't hate this from Gilius. I think this is a really smart kind of um, answer to the split map play. They say, okay, I'm a little late, but go blue. As you see him walking straight towards the red buff right now. 
since my bot lane's pushing, Silas can get back to me when that second wave crashes in, and mm -hmm. I can still make this work. Absolutely. We're just going to see a split map, or what you would expect, but you mm -hmm. see El Yoya coming down. He's not willing to give this up, roaming with Niski to try to take that red buff away. And we can watch mm -hmm. how this plays out. Niski gets caught by the flash from Gilius. Oh, Gilius didn't flash. Niski flashed, flashed into yes. the Jarvan EQ. And then we have a four stack from SK grouping up and they catch Kaiser on the tail end of that Jarvan Q. Unforgiven, not quite able to finish off Gilius. That reset may have been able to get him to run to safety, but early, early game dominant from SK just on, I think a mistake from Mad Lions. I don't like that El Yoya path down here and even put himself in this position. You should have given it up. You should have just split the map vertically, taken all of the top side and just gone and taken your blue buff. Mm -hmm. And looking at it, uh, I was Gilius lived with three health, three HP and doing VOD review, you can look at that and go, man, we were three HP for maybe our Jinx popping off and taking over the fight there. But at the same time, you're looking at it. You're there. You're the late game scale and comp. You do not need to do this. No, absolutely War not. War bot lane is fine. They're, it's really hard to do those level three, level four dives now with the durability patch it, with the absolutely. durability changes. It's really hard to do that. This if isn't needed. Now, you don't need it. If you look now, Ayoya uh, has red buff. He's not really mm -hmm. losing out by just letting letting Gilius have this, but instead you try to greed out on your jungle. I think Unforgiven got a little too hypey. I wish he would have just backed off there instead of trying to go for the hero play. Can't necessarily fault him for that, but it yes. ended up going a lot worse just because you wanted to double red buff a Jarvan. I don't mm -hmm. think is really all that necessary. And I'll tell you, I think another mistake made, made here. I think Aphelia shouldn't be chasing there. I think he goes back on the wave, pushes that wave in, and crashes it. Jinx loses out on so much more. She loses out on two waves worth of minions, and she's so far behind now. And if you look at the CS numbers, they're pretty even here. Yeah, getting three three assists on Aphelios I don't think really ended up working out. And Gilius counter jungling a little bit, but it cuts away to Gen X taking a pretty bad fight against yes. Gangplank, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, he's he's 10 CS up. I think he's got the wave in a fine spot. Now, Sirtis on the Silas, two kills up before five minutes. Really, really good, but again, I kind of wish if they had picked a more powerful mid laner, I think this could have gone a much different direction because I don't know what Silas is really going to do. He's down CS right now in the matchup against Talia just because He's a Silas. There's not really much he can do yeah. right now. He's effectively melee. And Gen X gets this wave pushed in. Gets the teleport from Armit, which is... Okay, Mountain Dragon is up. I doubt Mad Lions would want to be going for it or calling for it. I think it's a safe thing to do to kind of sit back and say, Okay, we are... Got a little ahead of ourselves. I think our power spike comes a little bit later. And we'll see... <laughs> And I like what SK is doing here. I think they realize that they do have flash timers to play around. They're really trying to punish um, Niski here because like you said, this matchup is a really hard matchup that you self countered. If you didn't have these two kills, it looks even worse. So SK is very lucky to be in the position they are in right now, just for really almost to say a lucky fight that just shouldn't have happened in the bot lane. Absolutely, and you look now Jezzy was on the wave alone. Unforgiven and Kaiser did a full reset. They're clearing waves around Dragon. Gilius is right there. I think Sirtis could have pushed this lane and they could have started that fight on Mountain Drake about 30, 45 seconds ago and probably would have gotten it, but they weren't confident. They didn't think they could do it. I believe they also had vision on El Yoya not that long ago. Yes, yes. he was clearing a ward right as... Uh... Right as Treats was coming in as well, so they know where El Yoy is. They really could have forced it. I think we're really seeing the, how SK really is not that early game focused team. It's been two, three minutes since you've gotten this big kind of lead handed to you, and the gold lead has really stayed even. Absolutely, they got about two thousand gold up just from just from those three kills, and now 
we're still seeing about 2,000 gold. Bot lane has a 20 CS lead, which is good, uh, mm -hmm. considering the Jinx just kind of had to set, just kind of has to sit back and wait. Now that uh, they've been set behind and gotten killed, but I think SK could have been pushing their advantage. Maybe, maybe this draft they didn't expect to get this early lead. Yeah, Probably exactly, not. exactly. And now you look, we're seven and a half minutes into the game. Everyone's flashes are still up, and you didn't get anything for it. No. So it's now how how do you make and set up the next play? Yeah, and we're seeing that. Jarvan almost has his ult, he's getting close to 6, but whereas Gen X has it and tries to get Armut, but Armut saving the orange right for the Nar W, which is what you want to use it for. You can't cleanse out of the Nar ult. You can out of the stun, but he will still push you around where he wants to go. He can't cleanse out of that. Yes. And, and for sure, and you can see SK start to rotate up treats. You can see they're posturing up and ready to try to set up for this Herald here and try to make a play to try to push their lead. Because again, they're on that timer. They have to make sure they are continuing to try to push this lead that they have, and we're not there yet. But Kaiser is there as well. And if you look in the CS, that 20 CS lead for Jezu is now at seven. Unforgiven has done a great job of just CSing safely, and I don't think Jezu has really pushed the envelope. Not that Aphelios really can push the envelope when his support has left. But Exactly. They spot Kaiser. They don't fall for the bait that Alyoya and Niski were setting up in the vision play. Mountain Drake's still up. Unforgiven pushing here. He's going to get a plate here, which is crazy, depending... Seeing how far behind he was early, Jezu got nothing while he was on his own, and Unforgiven just immediately... I think Jezu just took a bad back timer, and the wave got put in a bad spot, and he has to flash now. CS lead now in Unforgiven's favor with the Noom Quiver on both sides. He's going to get a second plate here. The minions should take it. I, I really think it's a missed opportunity. For sure. And... I really do not understand what Treats is doing here going in. As we see, it's a losing fight. It's a losing fight. All you did, you even, and I'm going to back up just a little bit. I want to point something out here. Whereas another way they self countered, let's watch this Jarvan ult right here. Who is in the Jarvan pit? Three SK members are in the Jarvan pit and who does Mad have on their team? A Jinx who just switches just switches to fish bones and free fires. They're stuck. Yes. They can't get out. He drops the Jarvan ult immediately because uh -huh. he understands that he got three of his team members trapped in with no way out. And then shut down on Desertus for Niski. And then the gold completely back to even. Yes, you have the Gangplank ult that came in. You have Talia with the new rework Talia. You have her, uh, I guess it's E that extends out even further now you have jinx who can free fire getting that splash damage from the rockets it's just a firing pit you're shooting fish in a barrel there and it's yes, so and easy to do her new and her new ability now no longer just damages if you dash through it it now stuns you exactly so you see now jinx just has a, a free lane here getting the ult as well for the extra splash damage is just the trundle pillar there also great for slowing down treats and it doesn't really affect jinx in any way and they nope. get the dragon now the gold is completely even jezu not part of that fight at all probably for the best i think galias really kind of ruined that fight for them better to not give away the extra kill if he was there exactly exactly and I, like we talked about with the self counter you have jarvan who can get stunned by talia silas who can get stunned by talia Nautilus who can get stunned by Talia. Nar jump, I think, can even count as a stun. I can't remember exactly yes, how that I believe works. it believe yes. it does. The Jarvan EQ, the Nar E, the Silas E, the Nautilus Q all counts yes. for going yes. through that ability. And we see Matt here rotating up. Gen X actually getting a little bit of a lead, getting a getting a tower plate already. I think he gets a second one here. I believe he does. So Gen X in a better spot than everyone else on his team, but starting the armor boots. 
I think is really just shooting himself in the kneecaps. I understand you want it eventually, but if you want to push this lead, if you want to push this lane, especially if you were the only lane that is winning 500 gold ahead, I don't understand the boots rush right now. No, and it's it's the NAR conundrum that comes along with this pick. It's it's winning 90% of lanes. And as we see the Herald crash, SK's not even able to get the tower. But yeah. with NAR, you win most lanes, but it's you have to be useful in the team fights. You have to hit the impactful ult because if you miss it, you're you're a health bar at that You Absolutely. are kind of useless and looking at like gangplank here where any of your abilities can be game changing for you your ult yeah. is game changing too you can't you miss see it here nar buying all the components for divine sunder i think if he had rushed any of those instead of just going for the upgraded boots i think he really could have gotten a much better higher gold lead getting more turrets mm -hmm. on this gangplank because you really can kite him out i believe nar boomerang is a higher range than Gangplank's Q, you can really, really bully him. And if Gangplank wants to go in, you have a higher attack speed, level one. You can win those barrel fights. Yeah, exactly, 100%. And we're getting to see Mads able to push in, get vision into the jungle. And SK is bot lane, has to play safe. They're worried. They could get dove here. Another position where I think the Aphelios pick really not being all that useful because Aphelios has no way of really escaping from the Trundle, getting out of the Gangplank ult, running away from Talia, running away from Rakan. You picked an extremely low mobility carry as your fourth pick when you had already seen the Trundle and the Talia and the Gangplank who would love for someone to just stand still and fire against them. Yes. Oh, 100%. But we'll see here. Gen X being a little too deep. Popping Mega. He sees Niski coming. But I think... Gets a good ult. And he sees Gilius there. But I don't think it's going to be quite enough. Kaiser. Popping that ult, I think, a little early. But just more people there. Gilius again. <laughs> ulting in. Hoping Sirtis can get something done. But let's look right there for a second and see what happens again with this Jarvan. So look, you see four people right there and your, and your Silas is there. Dream scenario, you pop them in, Silas gets his passive activations with his auto attacks and you just burn them all down with your strong Silas, right? Perfect. Wrong. Gilius yeah. goes in, Sirtis is turned around, Treat is way over here behind the Baron pit. So what happens? It immediately flashes out. Hmm? Sirtis takes the Rakan ult, which I think, great decision, but mm -hmm. he goes in Niski Hourglasses and look what happens. He ends up on the other side of the pit. Huge, huge mistake. Hard, hard to call that a mistake. I think it's just an interesting interaction with Niski being so close to the wall, how it yes. interacts with Hourglass characters. But now he can't get in. Gilius has to destroy his ult walls. They decide to turn. Mm -hmm. And Treats gets a pretty good hook with a Gilius Q, and they get the turnaround on Elioia. But I do think that any other ranged mid laner could have just won that fight a few minutes earlier. It ended up yes. working out for SK this time, but imagine what could have happened when you have three people in Jarvan ult already against, let's say, a Corky at this point. Yep. I know Corky just got nerfed, but imagine this a patch ago, if he has his, especially the big one, and can get his Phosphorus bombs in that pit, I think it is just game over. And we will see this a few times coming in this it, game. It's funny, I've written my notes for both of those plays. Just starting out, Gen X, what are you doing that far? You, yes. you see the Talia, you know they're there. What are you greeting for? The plate's not even there. Great job, I bet. They get it. And then right after it, Matt, what are you doing? You're running into this choke point. And the few times that, hey, this Jarvan ult can work. It's really close, but it's enough to win you the fight. Matt, what are you pushing for extra there? You got given a gift. Take but it. even despite that, what happens? Mad gets a second Drake 
in trading for the Rift Herald, and we'll see how SK uses it. But I like the dragon stacking from this late game, from this really late game comp from Mad Lions. They want to get that dragon stacking, and SK really should be prioritizing taking those away at this point, especially with their current lead. And I think this was a missed opportunity from SK too. I think Mad overextended here, and I think you have red white guns on Aphelios, you want to fight. This Absolutely. is your time to fight. If you can you get a Jarvan ult on top of them with the with the Aphelios red and white just running around them, it would be great. But they don't even yeah. get the turret with the Rift Herald. Mad Lions has the dragon, that's done and dusted. You got 75% of a mid lane tower's health. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think this is a problem that we're seeing from Western teams right now, whether it's in the LCS or the LEC. I think the second Rift Herald is too much of a priority where we're, where we're throwing away dragons to get that second Rift Herald. And I really feel like at least 75% of the time, you're not getting anything from it. You maybe can knock down a quarter HP tower, but you're not getting it. Let's pause right here. The observers did a wonderful job of highlighting SK's vision. Now let's look at the map right now. Gen X is almost halfway up the lane with only one ward on blue buff. Question mark, question mark, Huge question mark. Question mark. I mean... You can even see the pings on the mini mini map right now that they're going that they're going for him, and we will see as it happens. They're all postured up on this bush. Gen X maybe realizes he's a little too far, starts backing, but Mad Lions see it. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, they get the teleport out. Great Narhold, I wish someone else was great. there. Yes. Uh, it would be great. <laughs> but they get the Gangplank ult and the Silas teleport out. Gilius manages to get a kill on the return, but again, Mad Lions is okay with that, mm -hmm. I think. They got yeah. a teleport out. They got the Nar knocked down again, who has got the lead onto Armut. Let's get the bot lane in exchange, which I think evens it out a little bit, maybe a little bit in the favor of SK, because Armut's pushing up in the top lane. But I think it's just, it's just the small things that show that SK is really not well equipped to play with, the, with their current lead. And I feel like we're really starting to see some of the top teams in the LEC really start to show where they are better than that middle pack. Last week, we had this big clump of people really close. And we're still there, but I think we're starting to pull out the contenders from the pretenders. Absolutely. I think it was a good response by Mad to catch out Gen X. Mm -hmm. Just a little unlucky that they got caught out by the Nar ult. You saw Elioia actually was not stunned and was able to keep hitting. If Niski was just a little bit further away from the wall, I think they have a little bit higher health and Gilius isn't able to kill on that exchange and maybe they don't get the bot turret. But still, good play from Mad, good punish. I think SK is just going to keep falling into that trap. Only 800 gold ahead, two minutes to Dragon. They really don't want to give this one up. You can see them sweeping right now. Mad Lions knows that's what they're doing. They're instead getting vision in SK's red side jungle. And really they're looking at it as, you know what, if they want to take over vision of bot side, that's fine. We don't necessarily have to fight over this dragon. We still we still outscale. Them putting all these resources in the bot lane allows us to take top red side. You still get to push those advantages. And they're even able to protect the mid lane turret. Uh, it's just going, the gold may look even, but I think the game state really favors Mad Lions right now. 100%. Uh, it's really going to have to be a case of SK needs to get the perfect fight where they are able to do that wombo combo, that Jarvan jumping in, Gnar with the great ult, Thelius with good guns, blowing up Mad before they can counter punch. I want to stop right here. We can look at some very key item completions a minute before this dragon spawns. Gangplank going for the very, I think very controversial healing cut, second item. I understand that you really don't want Silas to be able to heal up, but Silas starting Everfrost into Hourglass. Not, I wouldn't say it's going to be healing that crazy right now. 
and Aphelios only with the Vampiric Scepter. I think that probably could have waited just a little bit. Maybe you just get the anti-heal item component. I wouldn't go all the way into finishing the item at this point. Yes, I think right now Ken Punk Chainsword is right now the kind of niche item of this patch because it went from one of the least gold efficient items into the game to a very gold efficient item. But I think this is one where you're looking too much on the numbers and you really need to be looking at game state. Um, yeah. You really do not need to finish that. You could be pushing more towards adding some crit in there to try to one shot with some barrels to make other moves with it, but we'll see how it works out. It, it ends up, for the most part, working out this game, it seems. It's working out so far, but I think mm -hmm. if they could have been just a little bit stronger for this upcoming dragon fight, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. As Gen X is backing with 30 seconds left to go, he has teleport up, so it's not the worst to have a little bit of a late back, but I, you'd want to be backing a little, about 30 seconds earlier to be running down and setting up with your team, but look right here, Sirtis going for the long flank, but his team, not there, not sure what he's yeah. doing standing right here. Takes the Rakana ult, worth his time, but I really, without the vision they have in Mad's jungle, he could have been jumped on so, so quickly. For sure, and he's able to start wrapping around, but again, he's on that vision, you can see. They have the blue ward right there. Absolutely, and I'm going to slow down this really quickly so we can talk uh, so we can talk about what happens here this is a very crucial fight for both sides they know mad lions wants to be on soul point and sk doesn't want mad to get to that point niski spots out certus on the back side he jumps in charms unforgiven but they also get the charm on the back side kaiser charms gen x right as he goes mega so what happens here gilius doesn't quite finish off Unforgiven. Gen X stunned against the wall. And Jezu, who does Jezu want to hit here? Kaiser? Elioya? They're not They're not going to be going, going down that quickly with the blue and red guns. Unforgiven, way over here on the back side, manages to get away. We do see Gilius ult Unforgiven to get the kill, and they kill Kaiser on the back side. But Niski trapped in the pit with Gilius. Treats gets a pretty good hook onto Armit right here. And I think at this point, uh, right there, Niski stops the Jarvan jump, barely. Gets the kill on Gilius. At this point, I would say, Elioya, come here. They don't have smite, just run away. But where is Jezu right now? Why, <laughs> why is Jezu yes. here when yes. Nautilus and Nar are behind him? I think he greeted out on the kill on Arma, and we can let's go back five seconds and let's watch yes. Jezu right. Let's watch Jezu. He's in the jungle. Gale forces over to get the kill on Arma. Doesn't quite get it. I think he tunnel visions here. You never need to be this close to Trundle. Absolutely You're in not. Range. You're right where he wants to be. I understand red guns have lower range, but not that low. Not no. that close ever. No. I think he grieves just a little bit. Elioya, I think, realizes this. Look at that huge chunk Niski gets onto Jezu. It and then massive. he has to flash away. So I would normally be calling for Elioya to come back saying they don't have Smite, but with Aphelios where he is, it almost feels like, oh, they're trolling. Oh, we need oh, to they've go. lost their mind. They've lost. Aphelios with no mana. Elioya flashes, gets the, gets the chomp on him, and then look right there, stunned. Stunned because he went through Talia's E right there. And what can Asylus do if he's stunned? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. nothing. This has turned so quickly into Mad's one fight just because Unforgiven dead. Great scenario for SK right here. But Jezu greeds so, so, so hard. You can yes. just kite away, pressure away the Trundle, get the Rift, get the Rift Scuttler, Try to move in with some vision with Treats and Gen X and just see if he backs. And if he backs, burn down the Drake, pull it out of the pit, run away, or give it up completely, wait to fully reset if Elioi is resetting as well. But Jezu, mm -hmm. I think, lost this fight for his team. Oh, 100%. And, and I have to I have to give a hand to Niski here. Niski played this fight as 
about perfectly as you can. He bought time for Unforgiven to get a little bit of damage off. He did not die instantly, meaning that Gilius had to overchase for him. He hit in this fight three seismic shoves. Three seismic shoves that were huge. When Unforgiven was caught out, a seismic shove to stun both Gilius and Sirtis. And just buying that time, we see. We'll see it in faster we'll see speed. It replay again. Niski's Got playing it. so far back. He's yes. playing as far as he needs to, except when he gets caught by Jarvan, but he still wins Beautiful that shove exchange. There too. Amazing shove. And again, he yeah. stuns Sirtis at the perfect moment that he can't disrupt Elioia, and Jezu dies for it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've seen out of Niski. That's what we've seen where Niski has been such an important point to this team, such an important unit to this team and really has helped them to solidify themselves as one of the best teams in Europe right now. Absolutely, I would say so. And even Armut's 5,000 damage on Gangplank almost went a little bit invisible just because he was there. He hit the yeah. barrels. He had his ult going. I believe he had his ult going over the fight and it's just a lot yes. of damage that built up that he's able to chunk out Sirtis at the perfect and, moment. And that shows that synergy. Armut threw that ult right as all of SK went in on Unforgiven. It's still damaging. It's still giving Jinx time to get a couple autos off, to get out, to take that vision away from the rest of the team fight. Yep, absolutely. And even though the gold is even right now, just like before, Bad Alliance, three Drake advantage. Bot lane mm -hmm. is functionally even. I think. It, if this game is com actually completely even, Mad Lions is still at a fine spot. The extra drakes that they have is just icing on the cake at this point. SK cannot burst down Baron. No. Not until Aphelios gets another two items and has white and has white and red gun. But uh, I think they are perfectly fine to just wait the extra two minutes and fight mm -hmm. again. They've won every team fight except for the first one. SK may have gotten a few kills ahead, but Mad Lions only really fell behind in any fight at the very beginning when Sirtis went 2-0 and 1. Exactly, and looking at it, really all SK can do here is look for picks to set up your Baron fight. You have to find ways to, okay, look for that one person that's caught out. How can we make a play to get us back into this game? Take back that control that we had, and we'll see how they set it up, but but and then Un adds Unforgiven's flash just came back up. Elioia's yes. flash will be up now. And it seems exactly. like they've lost their they've just lost their opportunity. Sirtis finds Niski and Shreets gets the ult off. But what happens here? We get a teleport from Armut to a responded teleport on the other mm -hmm. side. Jarvan ult onto Armut, but there's the gangplank ult. Sirtis, extremely yes. low. Gilius below half. And even though Jezu can fire on Armut, what happens? Gilius dies 41 mm -hmm. seconds until the next dragon spawns elioia is yeah. still alive unforgiven Matt, unforgiven elioia and kaiser are running away now they say okay they have no smite we're going bot lane right now we're mm -hmm. not fighting this and what's sk going to do are they going to take get baron the, get on the baron it's a smart decision really they have the extra teleport from Sirtis, mm -hmm. and they're going they to have burn it down mm -hmm. they have the gnarl but as they realize, hey, Elioia's still up. So they start pushing Mad out, but Mad does not panic here. Watch what Mad does. They do not panic, they push into it. Talia has TP'd in, and they're set up for soul now. Now what's happened, so SK chased them all the way to the Dragon Pit. And where is Gilius right now? I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit. Where is Gilius? Gilius is in base. Yep. Dragon is spawned. They have a Jinx and a Trundle right on this dragon right now and i don't think i could pick two better champs to burn down this dragon and the talia ultimate just pushes out jezu they can't fight Perfect. this sirtis tries to go in because if they don't take this cloud drake i think especially with the trundle and the trundle and the gangplank and the rakan with cloud soul so, so, so amazing. Sirtis goes into yeah. the Miracle Steel and doesn't get it. A little bit of a long shot as long as Elioia is calm. He can smite through that charm. Yes. No problem at all. 
but I, I can't fault Sardis for trying. Gilius just now shows up, but El Elioia is stuck in the pit for a little bit, decides he has to flash to get out, and Mada took what was a two deaths on their team fight to a winning situation for them. Oh, exactly. And we're seeing the power of the Talia here with the Weaver's Wall being able to zone off fights. And we're going to see Niski overextending here, but an Armit TPing and trying to make the most out of a play that's already lost. I think okay. that's where these top teams in the West do need to improve. Where, okay, Niski's caught out, not the end of the world. 4v, 4v5, we can still compete on Baron. Um, 3v, 3v5, they realize what their best move is, and it's to as trying to pressure them, saying, oh, we could steal Baron. I don't think they actually would have committed to it, but SK knows Smite, not confident, and they say, we can just have them chase us all the way back to where we want to be. By Dragon, we're not going li to let them leave our site because they want to kill us. I think Mad made a great decision there to make the most out of a bad situation. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. And what I don't understand right there, and I want to point out, is that Treats Hex flashes into a bush they have full vision in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I understand making the most out of your... Uh, <laughs> making the most out of the runes you've taken, but I don't think it was that necessary. You could have just walked around. You had, you had people in mid lane and SK, but he stayed in the bush because he knows Mad has no vision, but he dies, and right as he dies... Gilius gets, goes in, I think, not at a great moment. He just gets pushed out immediately. Kaiser, right here, pops the Rakan ultimate. Unforgiven yes. can free fire on Gen X, who does not have Mega mm -hmm. right now. Free to do Jezu wants. is extremely far away from who he wants to be killing right here. And let's see what happens here when Kaiser goes in. Gilius so low, burning down. Jezu is running away. Sirtis is charmed. Gen X about to get Mega, but Gilius dies, gets burned down. Would have been a good Nar ultimate. But again, I think a little, not on the same page. Jezu doesn't feel confident, got pushed away by the Trundle pillar. Not entirely sure there, but three deaths on SK, which really was a fight that they started. Yes. And. Treats had an idea to set up for that flank as they're pushing, as SK pushes in to get vision deep. That's perfect. But you step out of the bush, you're showing you're there, and then walk back in. Even if it's that slight little bit, they're pros. They're going to see that. Elioia knows he's there. And you're not winning this fight. Absolutely not. Especially the Jinx ult does so much damage on that execute. And then Gilius burns down with the Gangplank ultimate, and Gen X just in a bad spot. I understand you want to jump in, but he jumped in before he had Mega. It was about halfway through on that bar. I don't think it's the best timing, really. Not when I think you want to time that with the Jarvan ultimate. Get them in there. Nar jumping in, stunning them against the Jarvan ultimate wall, and then you get the Aphelios blue gun ultimate, the Infernum ultimate. Bam, they're all dead. That's, the, that's yeah. the dream scenario, right? Dream. But there's just no timing there. Jezu got pushed away when Jarvan ulted. Gen X is just so far down without Nar, Narbar. I'm not sure if there's no communication, if they're not calling out their cooldowns or what's happening. But Mad really being confident here with their Baron buff, pushing up into a choke point. Again, I'm not sure how confident they really are right now or if they really should be doing this, but SK can't punish it. Not when the Baron minions are attacking their turret. And Treats gets caught out. And you see, Niski starts wrapping his way around. And he puts himself in a great position. And Weaver's Jezu wall. Gets pushed back. They yeah. kind of force Aphelios to be involved in this fight, even though he doesn't want to. As we've seen, Jezu not really want to be involved in anything. <laughs> so far, 1-1-4. One, one, 50% <laughs> exactly. kill participation for his team, despite having a lead. Gen X jumping in, I think, is just... You have to do something. I don't get fault him when the towers are falling, but as we'll see here, they don't need another fight. 31 no. minutes, Mad Lions is able to finish off the game here. And it's hard, hard to really uh, say anything else here. Uh, I think SK had good moments, but just a few small mistakes compounding on each other and Mad Lions really being just the better team to capitalize on it. 
And this is, I think, the best example, and I think one of the reasons we really looked into this game is this is the best example of basing your draft off of trying to prevent the enemy team from doing something rather than getting the draft you want. Picking the Silas with the Nar, saying, we're not going to give you the opportunity to have Silas steal Nar. Even though we've already given up this big pick in Talia, you've based your whole draft around this and countered yourself mm -hmm. the whole way. And now you're set up for failure even when you're getting this great big lead. You have a 2,000 gold lead at five minutes. You're not able to push it because you can't team fight it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just a tragedy. I think SK is still looking pretty good nowadays, especially with Fanatic Misfits not looking so hot. XL looks a little up and down depending on the week we talked about them. Talked about them last week. And yeah. I think with four, four slots going to LEC at Worlds, SK is in prime position to make a tear. I don't know off the top of my head how many championship points they have from last split or even if the LEC is yeah. going to continue doing that now that their whole, their whole playoff picture, if you get top two in regular season, you are in Worlds. Period. Mm -hmm. And that's yes. crazy. I, th I don't know how I feel yeah. about that if, say, Rogue comes in, loses two best of fives in playoffs, and is now the fourth seed for us. Yes. Ooh. And, and, and we've, we've seen how Rogue is when they get to playoffs. It, it, we've seen really great things from them this regular season. You've seen some of their problems from last split kind of shored up. But again, you worry about that playoff Rogue debuff, really. And saying, okay, where do they go from here? But... We're not talking about Rogue now. Um, we'll have to see how they continue to look, how we look going into the next couple splits as playoffs is close. Absolutely, it is extremely close. And I think that will do it for us. Uh, please let us know in the comments of this video or or just tweet at us. Uh, you can find me at, at Mellory Lol, M-E-L-E-R-I-L-O-L. -E -L -L. We'll get the tags on the screen. Yep, uh, and rblanton77 for me, R B L A N T O N seven seven. Let us know what you think. Uh, if you see any big plays you want us to review or any games coming up, let us know, like in the comments or tweet at us. And uh, thank you very much. Absolutely. Let me know specifically if you were SK's mid laner, if you would have picked something differently. Very much so. <laughs> All right. We will catch you guys next time. Have a good one.